Welcome to my stand-up, sit down, depends on how I feel, comedy show. I'm a basset hound, you know, just in case you haven't noticed. My name's Boris, Boris Bassett, so the clue to what I am is in my name. It sounds a bit like Bond, James Bond, but not so much shaken, not stirred, more wrinkled and rolled. And I do like a good roll, especially in the morning, well in the afternoon when I finally surface. I'm not much of a morning dog, and I'm not much of a ruler anymore. It's all been bought up for houses that nobody can afford. My master moaned about the cost of my dog kennel. But if he wanted to buy a house now, my dog kennel would be about the only property he could afford. Of course, I wouldn't see him homeless, out on the street. I'd let him share my kennel. The price of the rent I'd charge him alone would keep me in bones and dog biscuits for a decade at least. But why do you call him master, some people will say. Doesn't it sound as if you're some kind of slave? I just smile. It might sound it. But what's a sound or a word? It's not me going out to work six days a week on a ten-hour night shift just to hold my head above water. I'll be sat on my dog bed or in any bed in the house which takes my fancy while he's out at work. Who's the master now? It's funny when people say us dogs should know our place. I know my place, right in front of the fire when it's a cold day. It's you humans that don't know your place, who have delusions of grandeur. You think that you're all this, that you're all that, when really you're not that much at all. You think that you're superior, the superior race, but superior to what I don't know. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot I like about the human race. Well, I try to look at the good in all, but there's a lot I dislike as well. I put most of it down to stupidity, the human races, not mine. Yes, they've done some fantastic things. They've mastered fire, something we animals don't need because of our fur. They've invented the light bulb, something we animals don't need because we can see pretty well in the dark. And they've also invented the Tory party, which none of us need. People say to me, were you named after Boris Johnson? And I say, no, I was named after Boris Karloff. I'm a lucky you know. And who is this Reese smog that people keep banging on about? He sounds like a cat, and you can never trust those. I keep hearing a lot about Brexit. It's a funny word, isn't it? Brexit. It sounds like a kind of corset an old woman would wear to keep her bulges hidden. They say the country is divided in half because of Brexit. I say it's always been divided. There's always been the haves and the have-nots. It's just that the haves have more money than they do brain cells. That David Cameron was a hab. He was a bright spark, wasn't he? Calling a referendum, hoping the vote would go his way, but not having an exit strategy except for slamming the door as he ran through it. When it didn't. Go his way, that is. But as I get acquainted with you, my audience, I feel I should tell you more. A little about my early life, maybe. I cannot remember much of my birth, even though I was there. But I can remember a little of my brother, sister and my mother. I never saw my father, but heard conversations about him being an excellent stud, which me being a chip off the old block doesn't surprise me, or at least it won't do when I actually find out what a stud is. Sadly, I come from a broken home. The reason I never saw my father is because he left us before I was born. I could rage and point out what a card and a bounder he is. But I know I'm not the only one this has happened to. In fact, it seems to be par for the course in today's not-so-polite society. Where have all the morals gone, I wonder? I'll probably never find the answer. I'm still struggling to find out what happened to that bone I was chewing on the day before last. My mother was a handsome basset. If you like wrinkles, sagging eyes and extremely loose skin, she was the very top of her breed. A beauty without compare, mainly because there was not another basset hound for another 80 miles at least. When my new family came to visit, i.e. the ones who were adopting me, my mother was very maternal. She growled and growled. She didn't stop them from taking me, though. Some people might have looked down on her for not biting them and drawing a little blood. But, but my mother was a lady, plus her bowl had just been filled with the finest dog food any pet store could supply. My adoptive family are a wonderful family. I have a master, as I pointed out before, a mistress and a mini-mistress. I'll never forget how excited my mini-mistress was when she brought me home. 
the child of the family, she adores me. Well, who wouldn't? I've always looked out for her, and she's always done her best for me. Apart from when I was a young pup and she bought me a pink tutu. Yes, you heard right, a pink tutu. My mini mistress had wanted a female basset hound that she could dress up. But when she met me, she had to have me. The problem was, she'd already ordered the outfit. It's for you, she said to me as she held up a pink doggy tutu. Words failed me. They also failed me later when she took me shopping dressed in the thing. To add insult to injury, I was paraded around the local pet store. What a beautiful girl and what a gorgeous pink tutu you're wearing, the store assistant said as she bent down to stroke me. I stayed totally silent, wishing everyone and everything, including myself, would just go away. What's she called? the store assistant asked. Boris, my master said with great glee. Just as a store assistant saw something hanging through my tutu which she didn't expect to see hanging there. Oh, the store assistant said, and then quickly hurried off to clean out the rummy nosed tetras in the tropical fish section. I've already touched on the subject that humans can be stupid some of the time. No, I'm being unfair. I take that back. Humans are stupid nearly all of the time. It's a rare occurrence when that little ray of sunshine called common sense shines brightly in their heads. It makes me laugh when they go around calling animals stupid. Animals don't wreck the planet with greed. We don't go around starting wars, but you can bet if there is one, we'll be drafted in and do our bit. Personally, I hate violence in all forms. I can't even bring myself to watch boxing when it's on the television, although I do like a spot of wrestling. We dogs don't go stealing people's money. We don't call anyone names. We might get in the odd fight, but not me, of course. I'm a peaceful hound, unless I come across that German shepherd who had a go at me when I was a puppy. If I see him again, I'll be sure to hit him with my wrestling finishing manoeuvre. There's payback to be had there, you know. I must admit I do like to watch a bit of TV. I like to watch the news channels. I like to keep abreast of current affairs. Luckily, my owners think the same way. It's a pity my master is too much of a skinflint to subscribe to the documentary channels. But he keeps me in doggy shoes, so you can't have everything. It could be a lot worse. They could watch soaps. I used to wonder why they called them soaps, but after having the displeasure of watching some episodes, I felt as if I needed a thorough scrubbing of my body and soul afterwards. It was my master's mother-in-law who subjected me to such animal cruelty, as she made me stay in the room while she watched the Hollyoaks omnibus. She was meant to be keeping my mini-mistress and I company, but that kind of company Bearing false gifts such as a double dose of Emmerdale and Combination Street, I can well do without. I can't understand why they don't show more comedies on the box. We could all do with a laugh. I think I speak for all the Basset Hounds and Human Kai when I say we're sick to the back teeth of DIY and home renovation programmes. Maybe my master should have videoed that plumber who came round and charged him £40 for a call out just to turn off the water. He made out like it was a big job and he was fully booked, but that he would be back the next day. He didn't come back the next day or the next week. If it had been left to him, we'd have all died at first. Yes, that would have made riveting television. Just like all those programmes with people with loads of money looking for an expensive new house. They never make programmes about young working class couples trying to buy their first homes. I suppose that's because there aren't any working class couples who can afford to buy their own home. If it's meant to be reality telly, it should at least be anchored in some kind of reality. Did I mention cookery programmes? Yes, I'm afraid I did. Talk about cheap television. You wouldn't stand in McDonald's and watch them preparing your burger and call that entertainment, would you? And yet millions watch someone make a dish with ingredients they've never heard of and will never eat in a million years. If you need any more proof that humans are sheep, this is it. If only as many people were as interested in politics as they were in sports and cookery programmes, the world might be in a better state. While the masses are huddled around the TV watching their football match, the Blues versus the Reds, they aren't seeing all the crap that's going on underneath their noses. I think the only way to cure this is for all the major political parties to have a great big football tournament. Forget the front and back bench in Parliament. Let's have a first eleven on the football field. Let
Betsy was strong and stable enough not to let any goals in, or whether they've got a leaky defence. Let's find out who's got the eye for goal by actually getting a goal. Whoever comes out on top gets to run the country. It would be a lot more interesting than watching all those broken promises during political debates. Let's have a few good tackles on the odd broken leg instead. Imagine Jeremy Corbyn going for a 50-50 ball against Theresa May. What a wonderful sight that would be. One person who probably should have his own television channel is Donald Trump. He seems to be everywhere. I wonder how he can find the time to run the world when he's making so many television appearances. I'm looking forward to when he appears on Strictly Come Dancing. I bet he's a lovely mover. I can't understand why people don't like him. The man has everything. Looks, charm and the most original hairstyle since Bobby Charlton or Don King. The president doesn't need to follow trends or policies. He sets them. What more could you ask for for a man in charge? I also chuckle at that video where he overfeeds those fish. I bet those koi loved him. I certainly wouldn't have any problem if he visited my house and overfed me. It could be quite the photo opportunity for him. What could make a better picture than a couple of handsome old hounds? Best of all, I like the fact he's orange. For so many years they've been telling us the future is orange and here it is. He looks like he's been dipped in a giant bag of orange coloured cheesy crisp. I could lick him all over. Wonderful. I can't say the same for our Prime Minister. I wouldn't want my mouth anywhere near her. Not even to bite. I know I'm up to date with all my injections and wormers, but is she? I can't understand what her and her rotten government have got against foxes. I don't think President Trump would endorse fox hunting, not when he's an old fox himself. There was some footage on the news of a fox hunter attacking some hunt protesters. If that kind of footage had been taken on a supermarket car park and the attacker had been sat on a mountain bike and not a horse, the police would have soon had him off his bike and in a cell. If it had been some young lager lout and not a lord or a lady who should in theory know better, the police would not have been dancing around saying yes madam, no sir. He would have been got by the scruff of the neck and had the proverbial kicked out of him. I saw something on the news the other day where a fox hunter argued that fox hunting should come back because it's an age-old tradition. I could argue that centuries ago there was a tradition for human sacrifices. If that tradition were to return, then I could nominate all the fox hunters as first sacrifices. Seeing as they're so fond of traditions, it's only fair. And to think, one of those idiots on horseback said to me, Get out of the way, you ugly dog. I looked up, wondering how she could call anybody ugly. And then I said to her, Madam, I'm a basset hound with droopy eyes, long ears and wrinkly skin. I'm the most beautiful creature in the world. That took the wind out of her sails. A little self-pride doesn't do anyone any harm once in a while. Wasn't that royal wedding rammed down everybody's throat? If anyone wanted any evidence that mankind was still stuck in the Dark Ages, the royal wedding was it. Supposedly sane and respectable people lined the streets to wish the royal couple well. They waved their little flags and stood proud at how patriotic they were. It's one thing to be an idiot, but to show it in such blatant fashion is another thing entirely. Don't these fools who line the streets cheering realise that they are just peasants who are paying hand over fist to sniff the same air as the chosen few they look up to. It's like the kings of old having a great feast and throwing some scraps out for the starving peasants afterwards. Look at what Guy Fawkes tried to do, and all while he was inventing the firework. What would the masses of today do? They'd probably voice their displeasure on a social media platform or start a petition. If that's all Guy Fawkes had done, the rocket would never have been invented and man would have never gone to the moon. On the plus side, if that bit of history ever was rubbed out, it would instantly stop all those idiots who blast my eardrums letting off bangers at all times of the year and not just on bonfire nights. I'll have to make myself a mental note sometime in the future 
make myself a time machine. Then I'll travel back to Guy Fawkes' time, tell him how much I admire him, and then hand him into the authorities before he can come up with any fireworks. I can't get enough of the sun. If I had my way, the sun would be out all the time, and I would be bathing under its glorious rays. After all, what could be finer than a basking basset? But the best thing of all I like about summer is the day trips. You simply can't beat a good British day out. My owners are members of one of those clubs where you can go and visit old houses and gardens all over the country. These are not just any old gardens or houses though. Oh no, these are stately homes. Buildings and gardens with years of history and there's nothing I like more than history. Well, apart from poor pies. As you can see, I'm a very cultured dog. My appreciation of art and good culture knows no boundaries. I've inspected all the architecture of all the famous landmarks. Blackpool Tower, the statue of Eric Morecambe at Morecambe, and Real Aquarium to name but a few. And so many stately homes that I couldn't just pick a couple to tell you about, in case it made all the others I hadn't mentioned jealous. There's nothing I like better than sitting on my stomach on a lovely stretch of grass, gazing at a grand old manor house as my owners feed me. A nice ice cream, maybe a raspberry ripple. It's no good for my figure, but what the hell, you only live once. On one day out, we headed across the road to the beach where we met some donkeys, and I told them that they were living their life all wrong. They shouldn't be breaking their backs walking up and down all day with people on them. It should be their owners out at work all day breaking their backs to keep them in the style they were accustomed to. We might call our humans masters and owners, but that's all just silly figurehead names we give them to massage their egos. In truth, it's we who are in charge. We just don't let them know it. I like to think my words inspired those donkeys on the beach, and that what I said has been passed around. I think there's a good chance it has, for whenever I've returned to Blackpool or any seaside resort, I've noticed there's always one donkey who breaks ranks with the others and does his own thing against his master's bidding. It may only be a small step from the odd individual, but such trickles can turn into a flood. That is how revolutions start, and I, for one, am proud of my part in it. They say that we dogs possess a sixth sense. I would argue with that remark and say we possess common sense, a quality most humans do not have. Common sense tells you when autumn is coming. The sun hides that bit sooner, the wind calls that bit louder, and advertisements for log burners start to appear all over the place. It's amazing how fast time rolls away off into the distance, sooner or later leaving us all behind. Our lives are nothing really. One minute we are there, and one minute we're not. Like a speeding motorist in a souped-up car with his number plates hidden, we are gone within the blink of an eye. And then, you get the idiots who say, I hope it snows at Christmas. Why? Just why would anybody want it to snow at any time? Do they like to see me freezing my plums off? Do they know how short my legs are? Believe you and me, I don't find it refreshing when the snow is up to my chin. I find it simply horrendous. What could be good about everybody skidding all over the place and getting a snowball in the face? The people who want it to snow are the same idiots who moan about it being too hot in the summer when we get a rare glimpse of sunshine. Oh, it's too hot for me. I can't do with this weather. I'm sweating cobs. What are cobs and how exactly do you sweat them? That's what I want to know. And these people who say these things are free to walk amongst us. This is what happens when all the lunatic asylums are closed down. Mad people roaming about the streets, dreaming of freezing to death in the snow whilst imagining cobs sweating out of their bodies. What is it about Christmas that makes people go so insane? It's just one day of the year. One day when we're supposed to have goodwill to all men and dogs, of course. It's not much though, is it? Just one day, and all the other days in the year, we can go around not thinking about others and not being nice. 
no wonder there's so many idiots about, is positively encouraged. For one day of the year, there's so much planning and money spent, I truly wonder why anybody bothers. You should hear them argue in our house over the family seating arrangements for Christmas dinner itself. I wouldn't mind, but the only two extra people invited are my master's and mistress's mothers. I don't want to sit by her, she won't want to sit by me. It so goes on and on and on. To add insult to injury, we animals get treated second class just because it's Christmas Day, when normally they're quite happy for us to sit underneath the table, hoovering up all the scraps they drop, the messy eaters. Come Christmas, they want us locked away just in case we spoil their special day by nicking the turkey. The confounded cheek of it all. Never have I shown so much as a glimmer of a passing interest in a big dirty bird. So why should it, just because it's Christmas Day, change anything? Of course, the highlight of Christmas Day is the present giving. My owners seem to think I always want a plastic toy in the shape of a pig that oinks if I chew it. It brings them much hilarity for the first five minutes of me playing with it, but an hour later, they are much more likely to rip the throat out of a plastic pig than I ever am, but they still never learn. My mistress is the only one who seems to crave a bit of variety in her gifts. This year, she got one of those things you stick in your living room and talk to. No, not an elderly relative you can never get rid of. I'm talking about a personal electronic assistant. It's amazing, or so I'm told. If you want to know the weather, just ask it and it will tell you. All this and more will cost you £100, as opposed to just looking outside, seeing what the weather's like with your own eyes, and spending your £100 on something more worthwhile like bones, pork pies, or something as equally important. In fact, I'm surprised just how much they've taken off. People actually like spying devices in their own homes, recording their conversations and sending the data to be analysed by big businesses. There are funny species, our humans. I don't think I'll ever be able to get my head around them. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the show, and if you haven't, tough. It have not cost you anything. But before I go, I'm going to ask a favour or two. All I'm asking is for you to be kind to animals, to people, and to the planet we live on. Maybe you could donate something to one of the many animal charities all over the world, or a mental health charity. If you can't afford to give anything, maybe you could just like or share this video. Spread the word, that won't cost you anything. And if you really do like my show, it would be nice if you could buy my book, Boris, A Dog's Life and Opinions, available worldwide and exclusive on Amazon. And remember, Boris Bassett will return. <laughs>